so actually it's just Thursday so I thought you know let's make a video and see what comes up we'll talk about current events and I hope you like the video if you like the video please do like the video and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and thank you very much for watching hey I'm Mark and this is my journey through tarot come on So there's so much going on. I mean, Donald Trump and his indictment um, clown car show. And then um, uh, with this uh, underwater uh, sub that they've just found uh, pieces of, apparently on, on the bottom of the ocean floor. So, uh, plus any of the current events. I mean, all the uh, Republican uh, senators who are willing to just throw their whole reputations under the bus, which at this point they just don't even have reputations anymore. So um, we'll draw some cards, we'll just take it at random and see what comes up. There's a lot of stuff in the news, so here we go. So here we go, um, just current events, what's happening today, and there's lots happening today. Um, it seems like finally uh, folks are going to pay for what they've done. And we're finding out that prosecution isn't easy. It takes a long time to make sure uh, that you've got enough to prove that someone is, is guilty uh, or you shouldn't uh, be accusing them of doing anything. And we might all try to live our own lives that way as a matter of fact. Um, first of all, is it any of your business what's going on? If you're talking about things that are going on in your family, uh, in your neighborhood, uh, with your friends, at work, at school, you know, at church, wherever you ha hang out, you know, is it any of your business to have a discussion that you might be having, period. So now take that to a national level. And uh, so the, uh, you know, you can't accuse a regular system in a democracy. You cer certainly can do that in an autocracy or a banana republic, and it happens all the time. And that's why you can tick off uh, on your ha hand <clears throat> journalists and people who are in jail all around the world that maybe shouldn't be. So, with that in mind, let's um, let's draw the cards on, on current events. But before we do any of that, because I think we really need it now, let's have just a moment of meditation. Well, let's see if we can look into the prosecution of Donald Trump. Let's do six cards to see what the cards say just generally about this. Is this the comeuppance? Is this the time? Um, will he get out of it? Um, is he guilty or is he innocent? Um, let's see what the cards say. First, we'll do three cards quickly. Is he guilty or is he innocent? And, and you know what, we don't have to name specific things. Uh, this person has a life that's been led uh, out in the open, and um, so we all know uh, what the question is, And but we just want to know, is he innocent or is he guilty? So the Ten of Arrows, uh, instruction. The Ten of Arrows, uh, now, oh, I've got to mention this too about the, these cards. So this Wildwood Tarot, these are not your typical uh, tarot cards. They're not like, they're not really read entirely uh, uh, like uh, the typical rider weight. So they're very suggestive and what the card says on it is really how you should take your lead and how you're going to read that card. Uh, so you could think of the Ten of Arrows as it's traditionally um, uh, thought of in a rider weight deck. But in this card it's telling you that you know it's still for me arrows are going to mean truth, justice, rules, and law. But we have instruction here. This card is defined as instruction. And look we have the wizened old man giving the you know young a person a lesson 
on how to use that truth, justice, rules, and law. Just how far to pull that, that, that string, uh, how to make an aim, uh, when to execute the issue. And so this is the Department of Justice against Donald Trump. And that's the first of the three cards. Um, is he guilty? The stag. And it's just that we're talking about in a minute ago, is that you really need to make sure that you know what you're doing before you pull that, let go of that bow. The second card up, and I hear my dryer uh, going off over there. Uh, can you hear it? The little song it sings? Anyway, and then the stag. So the stag is like the emperor in a typical deck. And so he is all knowing what he says goes. You can tell, look at the imposing figure this, uh, this person has here. And you can tell that it's actually a person because you've got a human leg, a human hand sticking out, and this is some sort of dress that this person has, some sort of garb that they're wearing. And I think this uh, stag head is on this human being's head as some sort of a helmet. That's how I take it. I don't take it as, as being a hybrid being of some sort. But this uh, stag is telling you that, okay, first we start out with the government knowing do not let go of that uh, bow until you know you can hit the target. And then the uh, stag, which would be a typical target in such a situation, but the stag is representing the strength of the truth and the justice. And is he guilty? And look at this, the journey. The journey. So this is like the death card, uh, actually. And it's number 13, uh, which is what the number of the death card is. So yeah, this is the journey. And uh, the journey is over for Trump, yeah. Spooky. He's guilty. We don't even have to say specifically what. He's just, he's guilty. Now, six cards about his, well, the, the remainder of his journey, I would say. Let's do six cards just for the remainder of Trump's journey. He's, what, in his 70s? And, um, you know, at, at 65, my age, I'm thinking about the end. So in his 70s, and as egotistical and a narcissist that he seems to be, uh, yeah, what's uh, the rest of his journey? We'll do six cards. And we might make it uh, four more, ten. We'll see. One, two... And remember, um, at the end of this thing, I'll tell you more about these cards. I don't get paid for that. It's just when I was just watching videos, I liked or wanted to know more about the cards. So I do that at the end, um, just for no reason other than that's what I would want to see done uh, if I was watching. And But you'll learn more about the cards. You'll see a bunch more. And, of course, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you could like, please like. All this stuff helps. So, okay, signifier card on his journey, Trump's journey. The first three cards have said, yeah, he's guilty. It ended with this uh, uh, tarot's version of the death card. Signifier card, his journey. Six of bows, abundance. Interesting. So six of bows is like wands. Wands are action plans, forward movement. The six of, of wands, um, okay, is clearly defined here as having everything, all the action at your uh, disposal. This card is rich right here with a lot of bounty. There's fruits, there's looks like vegetables, um, and uh, you've got the fire right here. I really can't interpret the top of this right now other than it seems to be in a forest or maybe this is a bird. This is a phoenix rising up out of the flame because you can see the, the wings of the thing right here and the head would be down because this is the branch of the tree. So yeah, this is abundance. And uh, that's the signifier card for Trump's journey. I guess this is where we're starting. And then the challenge to it, though, is that the Nine of Bows, which is respect, and look at this, this Nine of Bows, this Nine of Actions is demanding respect, okay? This, uh, this is a, a warrior who is coming out and saying, you, I've got you. So the challenge to this uh, abundant life is um, these actions coming against you right now and demanding uh, their due. Uh, the basis of the whole thing is the four of bows. So this is um, celebrations. Uh, again, it's actions, plans, forward movement. So the basis of this whole thing is the celebration of the... Okay, so we start out with a lot of uh, six of bows as his life, really, how abundant his life is. We have him challenged by the nine of bows, which is uh, uh, the all the truth uh, coming... All the plans coming forward to expose... Um, who he really is. And then the four bows here is a celebration of all of that, and that's the baseline of the whole thing. The ten of stones, so stones, stones are going to be like pinnacles, they're like the earth, like the value, like real true worth. And the ten of stones is just, you know, all about familial values. This card is even t uh, named home. So we can see how strong the home is. You go through this stone portal, you have this solid uh, entryway to the to this uh, 
you know, substantial house that's rooted into the, the ground. So yeah, this journey is, uh, and that's the past. That Any stability that was there that was associated with this uh, uh, good fortune, that's in the past. In the sky of this reading, look at this. The Ten of Arrows comes back. I love when the cards repeat because it tells me they know how you're going to read them. And so, yeah, Ten of this is the government really taking in. That's what's in the sky. And the final outcome for his journey um, is, whoa, wow. So the Four of Arrows, which is rest and, um, and uh, rebirth. So this is either death or um, finally giving in to the inevitable and something new being reborn from that. I don't know. This sounds like the end. To me i think that all of these uh, troubles are going to follow him right into his grave and he may not even have any prison time who knows that's what i see there so uh, i'm just going to do a deep uh, a quick draw on the guys in the uh, submersible that uh, i've just learned what is today today is um blind as a bat let me see so 623 it's 11 30 seattle time so we're just learning that they found the debris. So these people have been gone for some amount of time, um, probably since they first lost communication, likely. And they say it would have been milliseconds. That there would not have, it just would have been not anything, they, would, they wouldn't know anything about it. It would just boom, happen. So let's do six cards on that. One, two, Three, four, oh, five. This is heartbreaking. Six. Okay. The folks in the submersible. So this is the Ace of Stones. So this is value. The stones are pinnacles. And it says right here, the foundation of life. So, yeah, this is as much value as you can give a thing. And so for the signifier for this reading to be the Ace of Stones, the Ace of Pinnacles, the ace of uh, every, anything of any value of, at all. Yeah, the, sig the challenge to it, wow, again, is the actions that were gonna come forth and not be stopped. So Mother Nature, uh, this is even a very naturalistic looking card. Yeah, was it would not be uh, held back. The Knight of Vessels, so Vessels is like cups, so that's emotional, it's compassionate, the Knight is a Knight, and uh, so he's gonna fight for his uh, remit and so he's the Knight of Cups. And this Knight is really traveling swiftly. He's an eel, so you know that he can get the job done. And that's the basis of this whole thing. So how does this relate to the uh, people in the submersibles? The past of this reading then is the two of arrows haven't made a choice. Oh yeah, so each one of them, they were warned. I mean, they say that on the first page of the documents that you signed and agreed to, to do this, uh, death is mentioned three times. So they made the choice. Um, in the sky, this reading is the eight of uh, cups. And so this is really um, just loaded uh, with emotion here. And it's called rebirth. Oh my gosh. So yeah, so they are gone and uh, they are reborn again. My goodness. And then the final card is the great bear. So the great bear is the end of the ride. It's mother nature. It's, uh, you know, it's the universe. It's, it's how anything's always going to be. And we, we're so foolish to think that we have so much control over it when in the end, when it's over, uh, you know, it's just going to be over. And that's how it was for these folks. Uh, uh, gratefully, they went down doing something they felt uh, excited about doing. And probably right up to the minute that it happened, they were excited and, and, and not panicked. It likely was just, or they may have noticed a creek or something, and then boom, they're just gone. So. Yeah, and it's a powerful, ugh, some powerful cards. So, hope you enjoyed that read today. Well, I hope that was interesting. I just really didn't have a topic to start with, and uh, hopefully that came out to be something that you like. And if you do like it, please do like it. And, uh, you know, if you got something to say, if you don't agree with me, your opinion is 100% valid. So let me know in the comments what you think and tell me what you want me to read about, because I'll read about it. Yeah, that. I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang the Wildwood Tarot by Mark Ryan and John Matthews, and the illustrations are by Will Worthington. 
Very nice boxies come in. They're beautifully illustrated cards, as you can tell from the cover. The only one of the problems, I have a couple of problems with the packaging, is the box is a little difficult to open, so I've left it partially open so I can get in there more easily to do this uh, review. But uh, the box itself is really nice quality. If you got this as a gift or if you gave this as a gift, you thought, well, that's a really nice gift. And uh, so uh, they're kind of Celtic um, influenced cards and published by Sterling Ethos. I got them on uh, Amazon. Now, once you get into the box, which is not that easy if it's fully closed, but once you get into the box, it's got an amazing uh, illustrated uh, book that tells you all about the cards. It's not in full color, but it's got a lot of uh, divination meanings in here. But if you go right to the back, it tells you about the two authors and the artist. Uh, Mark Ryan was an, an actor, a singer, a writer, it was in direction, and as it was even in the British TV film series, uh, Robin of Sherwood. Then John Matthews, a historian, a folklorist, and children's, children's book author, and uh, also uh, graphic novels uh, having to do with King Arthur, Nazi Hut for the Grail, very amazing. And then the artist, Will Worthington, has been an illustrator for 30 years, and involved with some very interesting projects, too, and several other um, tarot-related uh, projects. Now, inside here, if you get, and I don't often take a lot of time to go into the uh, book, but on this one, I will mention that if you do take the time to read through this book, it's really the best way to get to know these cards so they don't divine in the way that typical tarot cards do, uh, Rider Waite system does. There's some similarities, but not perfect. And uh, in this part one, Into the Green, the introduction by Mark Ryan, it really gives you some good ideas about why he decided to design the cards these ways, uh, this way and what they mean. So, good book. I really recommend that you look at the book and study it a bit, really, before you do the cards. Now, the packaging. I don't like when you have to suffer to get the cards out. They have a little hole here that you can kind of dig the cards out with, which kind of works, but it's not my favorite way uh, to get the cards. But, if you get past that and you get into the box, and you get to see the cards, well, you're going to see they're amazing. Now, they're a nice card stock. They're kind of slicky. They're easy to use. Um, they um, distribute really well. And there's nothing particularly special about the back of them. They're, they're nice enough. But the card stock is quality. The cards shuffle really well, and they're easy to uh, do this kind of uh, shuffle like that. It's got a riffle shuffle, I think that's called. But when you look at the artwork on the cards, that's where everything really starts to shine. I mean, you really see how beautiful they are, all the intention that went into designing these cards, and you can really get some good uh, divinations out of here. There's some interesting uh, things here. They're not pentacles, uh, cups, uh, swords, and wands, but they're bows, uh, arrows, stones, and I forget what, and vessels. Uh, so those are the uh, different um, you know, designations of the cards in there. And then for the Major Arcana, they're a little bit different, uh, actually probably quite a lot different than the Major Arcana of other tarot cards that you may be used to seeing. But they're beautiful cards, and I really uh, love, and very positive message with these cards. So there you go, the Wildwood Tarot. Hope you enjoy them. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again, so ciao for now. <laughs>